Welcome to Ark Svartalheim, a modded map that features elements of every map on Ark. It is an awesome looking map, heavily inspired by dwarves and Lord of the Rings. So we have 100 days to go ahead and conquer this map and defeat its bosses and the dwarven denizens that occupy the area. By utilizing the S variants that are found throughout the map, can we do it? Well, let's find out. And so it began like many other adventures before it, gathering our basic resources beachside so that we can make our basic tools such as the stone pickaxe. With the stone pickaxe, obviously grabbed some basic flint, crafted up a spear and got our first kill on this unsuspecting dodo victim. Once again, the dodo falls prey to my hubris. We then went ahead and decided to kill a level 30 Dillo. Now I did have a slight heart attack thinking this thing was a super high level. Thankfully it wasn't however, and I was able to get some basic hides. Found myself a Pigo Mastix and well, I thought we could try and make some friends instead of enemies, but he decided to take my Mejo Berries and get the hell out of here what and never these? return. Yo! Oh, well. <laughs> uh, this is gonna end very badly for me. Goodbye, sweet world. I, can I make it onto this? What are they? I'm dead here anyway. Yep. Cool. Saw that coming. Well, bruh. You know what I don't miss? This. This is what I don't miss. So after dying a bunch of times, I managed to get a mortar and pestle up and run in on a little tiny foundation. Now, on the beach side, obviously nice and safe, I then found this level 102 Parasaur who appeared to be pretty stuck in the rocks. So with those new narcotics that had made up, I decided to make some trank arrows and start trying to trank this Parasaur out. Perfecto. While that was taming up, I then found some pure gold ore, which I mined, and I had never seen this before. Thankfully, the Parasaur did tame up successfully, and we now had our first tame, who we decided to call Duckbill. Wait. Do you guys hear that? It's today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, with over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships in massive dynamic PvP battles. Every vehicle is so detailed and modeled right down to their individual components, allowing you to be fully immersed in your vehicle. Now, if that doesn't sound exciting enough, it's also free to play right now on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Now, War Thunder also offers an in-depth customization system for your vehicles, allowing you to apply camouflage, 3D decorators, and historical markings on your vehicles. It also offers one of the most dynamic and detailed vehicle damage models in gaming, causing your vehicle to suffer actual damage to the components and crew. You'll also get to see what exactly happens to you or an enemy vehicle with the damage x-ray. Now, I really love the fact that there are so many vehicles to choose from and that you can swap the style of terrain you want to fight in with boats and planes being available. So if you get sick of the land, well, you can just take off and take to the skies. So guys, what are you waiting for? Download War Thunder for free right now and you can claim a free large bonus pack by using my link on screen or in the comments below. Later that night, I ventured out into the jungle surrounding the beach and I found this Volonosaur. Now, I obviously wanted to try and tame it. So I tried throwing some bowlers at it to see if I could bowler it. It had been a very long time since I had tamed the Volonosaur. Don't judge me. I tried lobbing some trank arrows into it and found out it was a level 168. So I got to work taming up some stigmia locks to help me knock out the Velonosaur and I successfully tamed up Headbutt. Now with Headbutt in tow, Duckbill and some trank arrows and a crossbow, I got to work on trying to knock out this Velonosaur. Alongside Headbutt almost killing the Velonosaur, I was successfully able to chase after it while it was running away due to the high torpor and managed to knock it out. 168 Velonosaur knocked out. Headbutt! You're an actual machine, little dude! It was then time to gather some prime meat for the Velonosaur, so I found a stego and kited it around into some lava so that I could harvest it and kill it nice and easy. Thankfully, I was able to get a couple of pieces of prime meat from harvesting up this stego, and I took it straight back to the Velonosaur, managing to tame it up and it coming out at level 250. Now, I was actually super disappointed with the Velonosaur because I feel like they had nerfed it into the ground and it had been a very long time since I had tamed up a Velonosaur. But nonetheless, it was still our strongest team that we had, so I got to work at firing a barrage of spines into everything and anything surrounding us, giving us a chance to try it out. We also tried out its shotgun attack, and like I said, I'm pretty sure they've absolutely nerfed this guy into the ground. I do remember people complaining they were OP for PvP, but I was still sad. I found these loot crates as well, and I got some Mastercraft Ghillie and an Ascendant Anki saddle, just up from where we tamed the Volonosaur. 
So I got some pretty good loot from these little spots here and I was excited to come back. I then decided to try and fight the Stego and a bunch of Stigmeal Locks the next day and I found a couple of caves where I entered and I found that the bats were ridiculously high level and I had to get the hell out of there ASAP. I then found myself in a bit of predicament up against a level 222 Deinonychus with no stamina and a bunch of bleed happening. So I decided to yeet myself off a couple of cliffs hoping to lose the Deinonychus along the way and not lose barrage in the process. However, I managed to somehow pick up two extra raptors along the way. I tried to make the jump across the gap and failed miserably. Was this going to be the end of barrage? I was really hoping it wasn't. We had raptors on my ass trying to munch it away and I just needed to get away from these guys. So in one final last ditch attempt, I decided to turn on them and try and fight them with no stamina and a tiny amount of health remaining. Thankfully, I was able to kill them. Where the Deinonychus went, I don't know. I then found the Blue Orb. However, I did not know that this was the Blue Orb at the time. It was a really cool little spot. I also found a Dwarven Forge. I then got into an altercation with a Polio Scorpius that I was trying to kill, and I got knocked out by it. I tried to get Barrage to come and help kill it, but literally, it was just useless. Barrage was just doing no damage, and the Scorpion killed me. So I made my way back to my little smithy, made a bit of flak armor so that I could hopefully survive the journey back to Barrage and reclaim my body. Thankfully, I was able to make it back there and Barrage was still alive, only just killing the scorpion when I got back there. How terrible. They really nerfed Volonosaurs into the ground. Like, it's really sad. And then disaster struck. So I'm going to try and figure out what this next question mark is. Hopefully it's something exciting. Well, fudge knuckles. I am an idiot. I couldn't see the floor where the ground was and Barrage is now dead. Ah, that's bloody wonderful. So after the fall of Barrage, it was time for Duck Build to shine and I found this weird teleporter, which actually took me up onto a floating island located throughout Svartalheim, which was absolutely awesome. So I did set up a little bit of a base there, just a foundation and a storage box, and I found this next location full of skulls and a bridge. Essentially what I was doing was traveling around the map looking at all the question marks, trying to see what they were. When I wandered into a cave and got trapped by a bunch of hyenodons. Unfortunately, Duckbill was now dead as well. With Headbutt in tow, I found the Golden Mines of Moria. I think that's what it's called? The Golden Mines? No, no, Mines of Moria? The, the mountain. Can't remember what the mountain's called. The Kingdom Under the Mountain, something like that from The Hobbit with small breasts. So we jumped down there to take a look at all the gold and see what was down here. And I was hoping we could open the chests, but alas, we couldn't. The king, king under the mountain, that's what he's called. I can't remember off the top of my head. So I explored that for a little bit and then journeyed back outside and found a little bit of a farmstead with a little house here. So at least I knew I could get some crops from this location. I'm pretty sure it had th all four different crops here. So that made things a little bit easier if we wanted to try and tame any herbivores later down the line. We could simply come out to this farm and grab the crops that we needed. I also found another dwarven forge in a little bit of a settlement. However, it was heavily guarded by a Serratosaurus, so I didn't really want to go down there. I found a 174 Iguanodon and knocked that out as well in the process and fed a Mejo Berry to a Mose Chops, taming that up as well. Then, as the Iguanodon was about to tame up, a Kano decided to come along and absolutely freaking tear it a new asshole. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, this is the typical CJ lock. So after that setback, I decided to head up to the floating isle and build a little bit of a base there. When I came back down, however, there was a Serratosaurus trying to kill me once again. I just, you just can't escape it. So my plan here was to try and get it off the edge of the cliff. So hopefully I would be left in peace. Thankfully that plan worked absolutely perfectly. That couldn't have gone any better. I then found a level 66 raptor, bowled it and got to work at tranking that out. Now it did have some friends in the area as well that I wanted to go ahead and try and knock out as well. So I found a level 21 tech raptor which I also knocked out because I needed my own raptor pack and then a 187 tech raptor. Tamed all these raptors up and got them into some cryopods and then I also found a 162 and I tamed up another stigmeal lock as I just could not find headbutt for me. I think we died while I was offline from the server and it just disappeared. The 162 Raptor came back and I finished knocking that out, making it our second strongest Raptor, 
We had the tech raptor, which was slightly stronger. So I had successfully tamed up my own raptor pack, and I was ready to dominate Svartalheim with them. Or so I thought. Until I found a level 18 Berserk Raptor and thought, you know what, screw it. Let's send in the Raptor Squad and see how we go against this Berserk Raptor. We hadn't faced one of the Berserk Raptors before, and it absolutely annihilated our poor Raptors. Our 105 went down just like that. I don't think our even, our, even our level 21 Raptor actually made it to this fight. It died before we even got into the fight. The Berserk Raptor, though, was slowly going down 1.5k health, and then our other Raptor died as well. So it was just me, my Tech Raptor, and the Berserk Raptor. I decided to leg it to try and get out of there, but I just not fast enough, and it causes you to glitch out and get stuck inside of it. So just like that, my dominating Raptor squad was killed by a level 18 Berserk Raptor alongside myself. So I put killing the Berserk Raptor on hold for the time being and found my base spot. I built a ramp and everything so I could get to the base spot, and this is where I was going to build for the 100 days. Up here in this waterfall. I felt like this was very Dwarven-like, building into the mountainside with the water running down. And you can see where I'd set my foundations up. Pretty much that entire section was going to be my base. So I placed my smithy, my refining forge, and then I got to work at finishing off the Berserk Raptor. With a carefully placed headshot, I was able to finally kill it and loot it, where I got some diamonds which I hadn't seen before, some obsidian flux as well, and some energy crystals. Now, all of this will be used for the boss fights. I then tried taming up some Andrew Sarkis's. However, literally everything in the vicinity had something to say about it. I only managed to get this level 18 one through sheer luck, and because it was so lo low level, that allowed me to tame it up. This 162 got bitten in the ass by a Kano. It did chase after it for a while, and it chased after me first before actually getting eaten by the Kano. But the taming progress still reset. So with my level 18 Andrew Sarkis, I managed to do a metal run and get some metal into my refining forge back at the base. I then headed out and knocked out this 174 Scorpion as I wanted something that can knock stuff out. And I also knocked out this level 24 Raptor. I mean, it wasn't anything super interesting. And then I found this big boy. A Paleo Arc Parasaur. I was trying to rebuild my teams after losing them all the last few days so I figured this was going to be a good start and this level 66 paleo arc parasaur looked dope and f I felt like it was a good start to rebuilding everything and just like that we managed to knock it out I then went toe to toe with a level 18 ceratosaurus with this ascendant pike that I had found and thankfully I was actually able to kill it due to the fact that I had flak armor and it did so much damage it was then time to test out my new scorpion the 174 tamed up and he was great. We managed to kill the level 24 trike. I'm not going to say with ease because we did take a little bit of damage. I also knocked out a 174 raptor close to the base. However, it was just on the edge of the water. So it drowned, which is exactly what you want to see. That low level raptor then died to a Smilodon, but I was able to kill it with my... And Stinger was very low on health after all these tussles. And I didn't realize that the Paleo Arc Parasaurs actually fought back, as the one I had knocked out earlier got killed by a Smilodon again. So I had tried to get this 168 hopefully knocked out, because these guys also aren't vulnerable, because they're much bigger. And they also attack you back, because they're obviously part of the mod. So thankfully I was able to knock out this 168 Parasaur, but it once again cost me everything. Because a Paleo Arc, Andrew Sarkis decided to aggro on me nearby and Stinger unfortunately fell victim to the damage of the Andrew Sarkis. But wait for it, watch this. This, this is where things get really great. I think I'm dead. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, Stinger, mate. Oh, this dude was one shot. Are you fucking kidding me? The point percentage changed it. Oh no, Stinger! <laughs> and our Parasaur's under attack by something as well. Wonderful. Back to square one it is. Oh man, I can't believe it. Oh, I can because it's typical of me. No! Get off me damn Parasaur! Bro, I can't hit it. Come on, man. I just need a goddamn herbivore. Oh, let's go. Oh, you are beautiful. 
I will. So after taming up the Parasaur, I then went on a rampage gathering as many Narco Berries as I could so that I could venture out and get to work on trying to knock out a Paleo Arc Carnotaurus. This plan did not go out very effectively. I was trying to climb up this ridge so that I could hopefully dodge its attacks when, well, obviously these guys are much faster than their standard Carnotaurus cousins. So I was definitely not able to outrun these guys. However, I did have the idea of actually going inside the house as they wouldn't be able to get me. But I died before that happened. Thankfully, I respawned near my base and ran back here, grabbed my body, and I was able to get inside the house and continue tranking out of the Carno. It was a mission and a half, and obviously because of the AI, it did decide to run away from me. And it kind of just got stuck up in this corner of the fort, which I obviously wasn't complaining about because it allowed me to shoot tranks straight into its butthole. Unfortunately, however, it did manage to get away from me and I lost track of it. And it also had a friend nearby in the area, a 156 Kano. So after dying to that multiple times and not being able to track down my 162, I did successfully manage to find it and its torpor was pretty high. At this stage though, however, I couldn't get the shots into it because I was just getting camped by its other friend. Look, and so, <laughs> it's just a cluster of dying. So eventually I did manage to get the Smilodon and the other Kano inside of that cave to some lava where they fell into the pit. I know how sad for them and died. Thankfully, I was able to find my 162 Kano that I was in the process of knocking out and one final arrow was able to put it to sleep. Finally, after all that time. I then found an Ovis, killed it for some mudden, and died to an Alpha Raptor while trying to get the mudden into the Kano. Multiple times. It's, it's never easy. Never easy. When someone else on the server decided to come and save me with their Thyla, and don't forget guys, you can join in on these playthroughs. My servers are completely free to join, and I do have a Patreon if you are after extra rewards. Thankfully, I was able to tame up my new Kano, and I called it Hornster. This guy was going to be great to get around. But first I had to die some more. I then took him out for a bit of a test run after crafting his saddle in the smith again. Hit for about 130 damage. He also applied a bleeding effect to uh, dinos as well which dealt percentage health and damage. So after taming up a couple of dudes I then went onto my most shops and did a berry run as I lost my parasaurs and I managed to find these guys. Now these guys were a modded creature as well and they are the Plateosauruses. These guys are once again another type of herbivore however they have a really cool ability that allows you to tame herbivores easier. So essentially what you do is you put narco berries into their inventory and they ferment them allowing you to make two extra new items. And so I wanted to get a bunch of these guys going as each of them will be able to fertilize the narco berries. And I just wanted to kind of take him for a bit of a test run. So we knocked out that first one and then we knocked out this level 60. All right, our first one is just about to tame up. These guys, oh, that was sick. Okay, well, our Plateosaurus is dead. I uh, didn't realize it was following me and it went off the edge into a Rex and now it's gone. <laughs> God damn it. After falling off the ravine, I also tamed up an order who we called Neck Cushion. Neck Cushion was going to come in clutch when we eventually did our artifact runs for the artifacts. Now here are the new items that the Plateosaurus can make. So Narco Berry Jam, which allows you to tame herbivores quicker and golden at Narco Berry Jam. Great items to have when you need to tame up a bunch of herbivores. So I also tamed up an Iguanodon here as well to help me get around. Well, that could have been disastrous. Wait, it's, is it walking on the bridge? Yo, this dude's a freaking spider, man. Look at this. What is going on? What a legend. I then had the aggro of a level 54 Berserk Raptor and I didn't feel ready to try and fight one of these guys with Hornster. Didn't really want to lose him as we were still kind of just setting up, like we had so many setbacks. I didn't want to lose Hornster. So I headed to the bridge to try and get the Berserk Raptor to fall down and thankfully it did and I didn't have to deal with it today. Hallelujah, Hornster was going to live another day. I then decided to take him out for a bit of a test run just to get some more levels and to deal some damage so that we could... Just use him for some stuff, get some hide, get some meat, and just get some levels with him so that we could start taking on all the berserk dinos that were located on the survival pine map. 
I also found a 156 Dodicarus that I got to work on knocking out and successfully knocked out as I was going to need a resource gatherer for stone if I was going to build the Dwarven Settlements. Now I also found a 156 Plateosaurus which I knocked out as well as a 162 which I also knocked out as well. I was trying to get as many of these guys as I could so I could get as many fermented narco berries. However the 156 did fall to an aloe and carno pack which just kind of fell off the mountainside which is always great when you're trying to do some taming and dinos fall from the sky to kill your ones that you've knocked out. Thankfully the 162 did tame up alongside another low level one so I could get these guys back to base and get them breeding and get them producing all the fermented narco berries I could possibly want. It also helped that they had quite a lot of weight so that I could actually do metal runs with them while we waited till we got an Anki, as that weight was going to be invaluable for transporting metal back to base, as there are no flyers on this map. Now, thankfully, I did find an S Anki at 124. Now, the S Ankies are Svartalheim's variants for the map, and they take massive amounts of reduced damage. So it takes so much more to knock them out. And I obviously didn't want to utilize all my Trank Arrows straight away, so I actually butted it with clubs, my crossbow, and then I accidentally hit the Stego in the process, resulting in, well, you guessed it, my death occurring. Upon returning to the Yankee, I continued clubbing it. I did have a couple of Trank Arrows, but the Yankee was in the process of running away from me because it couldn't catch me, so I wanted to save those for later. Thankfully, I did make a bunch of clubs so I could slowly club this guy out and we successfully knocked him out. It just took so long to get him knocked out. I successfully made up some Narco Berry Jam, so I wanted to test out how much taming effectiveness it gave. And it gave about 8% to the level 156 Dodiculus, which is okay, but it didn't really feel like it was worth the effort as you do need a bunch of other resources in order to make them. So it was a good kickstart for the tame, but I just decided to tame up the Dodicarus with Nijo Berries. Thankfully, the Dodicarus was tamed up and it came out really well. And we also tamed up the Anki as well. The Anki took freaking forever to tame up, so many days. But thankfully it was tamed up. We now had our basic resource dinos so that we could gather all our resources that we needed. On the way back home, there was a Berserk Raptor blocking the path, so it was now time for Hornster to shine. However, I wanted him to have a little bit of backup while we did this. So I threw out Sonic, and with Sonic and Hornster, I was hoping that that was going to be enough to be able to kill the Berserk Raptor, because Sonic had 6.5k health, which was much more than my Kano. So we got to work at attacking it and now these guys are also immune to the bleed effect so they don't actually take that percentage based health damage and it was a slow and tedious process but I think Hornster was definitely up to the task of defeating the Berserk Raptor. Let's go! Now Svartalheim also has an aberration area and I spent a few days trying to actually find the area to access this as I had no idea and I kind of wanted to go into Svartalheim blind. So eventually I did find this place that opens up and it actually takes you to the Aberrant Zone. After you make your way through all the mines and everything like that, you do find yourself in the Aberrant Zone. Now you're probably wondering, well CJ, why did you want to go to the Aberrant Zone? And the answer to that question is Maywings. Down below here, there are Maywings that you can tame up and obviously due to the fact that there are no flies on this map, Maywings are the best way to get around. Now, I had successfully found my first Maywings, however, it said they needed Extraordinary Gibble. And I, I was like, surely that's not the case, right? Maywings don't need that sort of thing when you want to tame them. They just need the basic berries or meat or whatever. So I ignored that fact for the now, thinking that the Spyglass was bugged. Cleared the area of the S Baryonyxes around us. These guys look sick as well, because I really wanted to tame that 174 Maywing up, as obviously it was a super high level, almost max level, because 180 was the max level. So I got to work killing all of these guys so that I could get to work on taming up some Maywings around us. After successfully trapping the Maywing, I went ahead and got it knocked out. It only taking 14 damage meant it just absolutely churned through my Trank Dart. So uh, it looks like we can't, these S Maywings must only require Extraordinary Gibble, which obviously we don't have any Extraordinary Gibbles, so we're going to have to rethink our strategy, because... 
We ain't taming a Maywing, that's for sure. I don't know if there are normal Maywings on the map, but the S ones are definitely out of question at the moment. So after the realization that I wasn't gonna be able to tame any Maywings up, I then decided to explore the area and found that there is actually another zone here. The radiation zone from Aberration is also present on Svartalheim. This map is absolutely massive. We then found the normal sort of aberration zone. However, I didn't actually venture too far into it as there was an S Ravager guarding the entrance and Hornster was also very low on HP, so I didn't really want to risk it. It was then time for a resource run. So we took Bolt, our Anki out on a metal run just above our base, which made things a lot easier as I could simply just fall from above, jump off Bolt at the last second, and get the metal into the refining forge just like that. In this case, it didn't actually work too well because obviously we hit the cliff above my base, but we just whistled Bolt to follow us and just like that, we were able to get metal in there. So we also took Sonic out for a bunch of stone as well. With those resources gathered, I was finally able to start making some of the Dwarven structures. Now these Dwarven structures required uncooked metal, stone and wood. So I made a bunch of the foundations and started placing them around where I wanted them to go. I didn't really have a particular design in mind for this base. I just kind of wanted to make it and see where it took me. So I obviously used some window walls and normal walls just to give it a bit of depth and detail so that it wasn't all the same sort of structure and just kind of got boring. So you can see that I had a bunch of resources, but I still needed more. So I took Sonic out for another stone run and I took Bolt out for another metal run. With those extra resources, I was now able to finish the main shell of the base. So this is the shell of the base. Now it's not completely finished. I do want to get some more torches down on these pillars and on the outside just here on these pillars. But uh, yeah, this is the shell of the base. I also went ahead and crafted up myself a journeyman long neck rifle as well as a bunch of ammunition from the blueprint that I found at the beginning of those drops. And then I found a 156S Thylacolio out in the Redwoods. So I built a trap and decided to try and kite it towards the trap. Obviously with my crossbow because, well, I wasn't going to waste my darts missing all my shots trying to get it in here. Eventually, however, it did get in the trap. It did maul me quite a little bit. Net Cushion had something to say about that. And then I got to work tranking it out with my brand new long neck rifle. My God, this thing just absolutely absorbed all of the darts. However, eventually I was able to knock it out. All I needed to do now was get some cooked mutton. So I added some extra structures to my base, such as the Dwarven Smithy, the S Plus crafting station. And then I headed back out to my S Thylacolio before it woke up in to try and tame it. I was cutting it very close. Thankfully, Hornster was pretty fast getting around the map and the map is kind of small in terms of surface area on above. So I was able to get back here relatively easily enough and I fed it the cooked mutton that I had. The Thyla tamed up successfully and I called him Lightning. He had decent stats as well, 38 points in HP and his melee damage was kind of lacking but we didn't really care too much about the melee damage as he has the bleed effect that does damage over time based on the target's max health anyway. So I wasn't too stressed about that, but with Lightning in tow now, I felt pretty unstoppable. His damage, like I said, was kind of low, only hitting for 104. Hornster was actually hitting harder than him, uh, but we did have that Nash ability that the Thylacolios can use. Plus, it's also easier to get around the map now because these guys can climb up vertical surfaces and walls and stuff like that. So I thought I'd try and take him out against a Paleo Arc Tyrannosaur, and uh, as you can see, it was a bit of a bloodbath. We did manage to kill it, it just took us a little bit of time to get there. On the way home, I stopped in the ice biome, killing some Kairukus so that I could get some organic polymer, so I could make some more structures back at the base, when I spotted a level 72 female Paleo Arc Greater Yudi. Now my thought process behind this was to tame this guy up so that I could get the Yudi eggs and use those as kibble, in order to get myself a Maywing. This process was very tedious and obviously teetering on the edge of absolute craziness because I knocked out the Paleo Arc Yudi 
underwater. Wasted all my darts for nothing. I then found a level 30 Uteranus instead, and I was like, yep, I will settle for that in order to get myself some eggs. Successfully knocking it out with my Brands Bacon new long neck. I love this thing, it's so good. I love it, it's great. Knocking out the UD and taming it up in the process as well. So I just had to get these guys back to the soul terminals in order to produce some eggs for me. I also got an Ascendant Shotgun Blueprint on the way back to base and decided to hit up some of the other loot drops located around the area. And I got some decent stuff, some sickles, some fur gauntlets, but I managed to transfer all of that into the base and built myself a refrigerator, a generator, and got all of those placed down as well. I hit up some beaver dams the next day in order to try and get some cementing paste, making sure I dropped all that wood out of there because I know you guys would yell at me if I didn't. I only got a little bit of cementing paste, but it was all I kind of needed. And there were dinotheriums nearby. I didn't really want to risk facing the wrath of a herd of dinotheriums and all the Castoroiduses. Lightning was already pretty weak as it is. And then I found some dwarven archers out in the swamp. Now these guys had fire arrows that absolutely decimated lightning. We took 520 damage from one of their arrows. But I decided to return and try and fight them to see what they actually dropped. As these guys were going to be key in ordering to be able to fight the bosses at the end of the 100 days. As they dropped Mithril Lore and a bunch of other goodies that I would need to craft the summoners for the bosses. I also copped a full on blow from a Dano Sukus chomp. Well... Almost copped it. Luckily I got out of there, otherwise that would have killed lightning for sure. I did however jump off to go toilet real quick and came back to lightning getting attacked by a Serratosaurus and almost killing lightning in the process. So I had to spend a bit of time healing up lightning so that we could return the next day. Upon returning I headed back into the Dwarven Ruins to kill me some more Dwarves because once again I needed as much Mithril lore as I could get my grubby little hands on. I was a little bit scared, I'm not going to lie. I was trying to get their aggro. I didn't want to fight them all at once and pull them underneath this little structure here so that I could fight them systematically one at a time. And uh, I didn't realize that they could do this, but apparently they can. We also take headshot damage, but they also are able to hit you on the back of your mount. Now, at the time of this, I had no idea and I wasn't really paying too much attention to my own health when I got shot off the back by Dwarven Archer. You can guess what happened. Goodbye lightning, goodbye neck cushion. We lost both of them due to that tussle. So I returned on Hornster to take on a Berserk Raptor. Thankfully Hornster's attack was able to actually knock back the Raptor, causing us to not take much damage. However, it did enrage nearby creatures and we unfortunately had to commit the unthinkable. I didn't mean to kill you. Oh, I feel terrible. I then went ahead and took on a Berserk Thylacolia that I spotted from across the lake and decided to try and kill him. Now, same situation. The knockback attack from Hornster was actually enough to knock the Thyla back from us and prevent us from taking damage until we hit a rock where we were kind of stuck from moving and in that case we did take a little bit of damage but nothing too serious that we couldn't handle. It was then time to take on another Berserk Thylacolio. This one a little bit stronger at level 72 with 16.5k health. However, this time I prepared myself to be able to walk straight back in a straight line before actually hitting anything. And then took it into the water where I finished it off. Successfully killing it and walking on the bottom of the lake for some reason. I have no idea why that happened and grabbing all the loot out of it. I also tamed up a Neck Cushion 2.0. And a lady friend so that they could have sexy time together. I then found an Alpha Paleo Arc Carnotaurus at 162. Now this guy was the strongest dino we had faced at 45,000 HP. Thankfully, however, it did take the bleeding damage and I was able to claim its loot. I also started breeding up Neck Cushion 2.0 and his female misses. So a uh, casual yellow drop with an Ascendant Thylacolio saddle. Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much for that. That is kind of crazy. I then continued drop farming, finding more Ascendant stuff. Then I went back down to the Aberration Zone. Now the plan here was to try and find a Shadow Mane to tame up and I successfully found a 180 female down here alongside a level 24. Obviously I was going to try and get that 180 female. 
It was going to take a hell of a lot and they aggroed on me so that made matters worse. Thankfully however someone else on the server had actually set up a trap down here much earlier. So we were kind of lucky in that regard because we could use that to hopefully tame up the Shadow Main. First I had to kill the level 24 Shadow Main which I did and then I had to try and get the 180 into the trap. How I was going to do that? Well it was going to be a challenge. Kind of on there. Oh, I got something in there. Level 24. That's not what we want. At this stage, it's just loop to loop. I wonder if it's worth me trying to get in here. I think this works. And then do that. Ooh, baby. Yeah, that looked like it worked. A little bit of a cheaty cheaty way. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it. After trapping the Shadow Main, I then continued around looking for other Shadow Mains that I could potentially tame up at the same time. I only found the 174 which I killed and then I went ahead and got a bunch of fish so that I could tame the 180. There was no point in me getting the fish first and then trying to get the Shadow Main just because it takes so long. Well, it doesn't take long for the fish to actually spoil. I returned back to the aberration zone and they weren't sleeping because it was the middle of the day. So I had to wait for them. So what did I do? I tamed up a Shinehon, this little kitty. Look at how cute they are. I don't think I ever used them for anything. And then I also tamed up some dung beetles because, well, I was going to need them. Then I could finally begin taming up the 180 Shadow Mane. I did kill the level 24 with a crossbow arrow and slowly began the process of taming up these Shadow Manes. I do wish they weren't bugged where you fed them the fish and they just didn't get the proper thingy. But thankfully, it was just a waiting game with this trap involved. So after catching more fish, I decided to wander up to take a look for some stuff when an aberrant megalosaurus was alive and well, I tried to get Hornster out, but well, yeah, that, that didn't work out for me very well, did it? Thankfully, I was able to get back to my body utilizing my Iguanodon that I tamed up very, very early. So thankfully, Hornster was still okay. We did have someone from the server helping us out, just keeping an eye on things. And then I could finally go back to trying to finish taming this damn Shadow Mane. Let's go. Finally tamed it up. Oh, hallelujah. Let's get out of the, out of the, out of the trap. Out of the, out of the trap, please. Bro, are you kidding me? Get out of the trap. Let's take a look at its stats. Yo, that's kind of crazy. 50 HP base. Let's go. I'll take it. On the way out of the aberration zone, I also tamed up two feather lights and decided to test out just how strong our new shadow man was. Obviously, it paled in comparison to these heavily mutated, imprinted, leveled up shadow mains. And of course, the first bite that I received from a Onyx gives me mega rabies because that's just typical of my luck to receive mega rabies on the first bite of an Onyx bite. I then also decided to check out some of the other players' bases on the servers, and this one was done by Zandrama, and it absolutely blew my mind. I loved it. I'm not the biggest cahoon when it comes to building bases, so I love seeing designs like this that allow me to get my creative juices flowing. I then also knocked out a male Uteranus so that I could get a mate-boosted female, so that we could get those eggs production going, so that we could get that mailing, hopefully. I then did get in a tussle with it uh, against the Chalice Ethereum, however, but we were able to deal with it rather well enough. So I just cried it up and decided to head back to base. Back at base, I decided to get to work on building my greenhouse. I wanted it coming out down below the bottom of the base here where the waterfall flows. So I decided to go ahead, place all of my foundations and just get to work on building the bad boy up. I also tamed up a Fiomia so that we could get a bunch of poop. And I killed another Berserk Raptor. I then got to work on trapping a bunch more fish as I was going to try and get a male Shadow Mane so that I could breed these guys together. As I was going to use these guys for the boss fights because obviously they're Shadow Mains. They're not easy to tame up. 
but it's an easy way to get 80 armor on some dinos um, and I hadn't found any Rex blueprints or tamed any Rexes and I just genuinely like Shadow Manes more than Rexes to be honest. Alrighty guys, we've got a 174 male Shadow Mane that right here that we're going to try and tame up. First things first is I need to get him into the trap. Alright, now he's coming. Ouch. So after sacrificing myself to get the Shadow Mane in the trap, I threw Neck Cushion out to save him from the horrors that are awaiting me from the Shadow Mane. Thankfully, due to my last escapade, I had put a sleeping bag down here in this section of the Aberration Zone. So I thankfully could respawn back here instead of having to struggle getting down here on a single Iguanodon. So that made things a lot easier, and then I just got to work on taming up this Shadow Mane once again, the good old fashioned way. My plan was simple, make it go invisible, jump in there with my Shadow Mane, jump off my Shadow Mane, Reclaim my bag and then jump out of there with my shadow mane. That way I could get everything from my body as I had stored all the fish baskets on my shadow mane because those things are hella heavy. Oh, let's go. Oh, so satisfying. This one went a lot smoother than the last one, that's for sure. At least this time we came prepared with enough fish baskets. Oh, baby, I'm excited. We have a breeding pair now, which is wonderful. All right, moment of truth. Let's take a look at the stats between the two of them. And the colors, also very important. Our guy has like... Are they purple or is it just the lighting around here? I think it's just the lighting. We might need to take them out here to take a proper look. Let's take a look here at the stats. So our female got the 50 points in HP, which is absolutely incredible. Let's take a look at our male stats. Here we go. Ooh, 47 points in melee damage. I will take that. It could have been higher. Could have been like we could have gotten less points into food. It was then time to get these guys back to base and get them breeding up. Obviously, I needed an army of them and I needed their stats consolidated into the offspring perfectly. I did not have a lot of luck getting that to happen. It took so many days to get the perfect stats that we needed. And you can see all the babies that we bred. Thankfully, I did get some males with the correct stats. I was just waiting on the females to get the 50 HP and the 47 melee damage. But I was able to get and raise these males up so that they could also contribute to the fighting. It took me a long time to get them. I did find a female that had lower food, but I didn't really care because it had the 50 HP and the 47 melee damage. So we got her out and started raising her up. Mind you guys, you guys are seeing this all cut down. This took me like so many days to get due to the server rates and everything like that and breeding taking a while and all that. So it did take a while, but I finally had my perfect pair, both at 291, both with 50 HP and 47 melee damage. So from there, I could go ahead and continue breeding them up to get the army that I needed to fight the bosses. So I ventured out the next day in hopes to try and find a Ceratosaurus. I also wanted to test out the Shadow Manes now that we had some imprinted ones and they hit very hard. When I stumbled across a 174 Ceratosaurus. I had already made up the Hemo Goblin cocktail. It was ready to go in my inventory. So I gave one to my Shadow Mane and fed it to it in hopes that the, the Ceratosaurus would get drunk off it and slowly start to tame up. However, that just was not the case. I obviously didn't build the trap big enough and for some reason it was just not getting any drunk whatsoever from the Shadow Mane, probably because of the Thorn Mail. So I brought Sonic out to try and do it and fed Sonic the Hemogoblin cocktail and that slowly started working. However, the Ceratosaurus just did not want a piece of us. It was ignoring me like crazy. It didn't want to take a bite out of my juicy blue bum. Just whatever I could do, it just didn't want a piece of it. So I just decided to give up on taming this 174 Ceratosaurus and just killed it because it just was not attacking us. Even after letting it free from the trap, it would bite me once or twice, run away and then never be seen again. Which is really frustrating because, you know, high level dinos, you don't find them very often and he would constantly get in fights with everything around us. You can see there he got to 20% drunk and then he kind of just ran off, got hit by something else and it reset. 
So I did manage to find another 180. It was very far from the area, so I did have to kite it back quite a distance to get it back into this trap. But it worked perfectly. I did extend the trap as well, and we used Sonic with the Hemo Goblin Cocktail to get this bad boy drunk so that I could feed it meat up its butt. After getting it drunk and feeding it its food, we managed to tame up the Serratosaurus with it coming out at 269. And I also got the perfect offspring, and then I went ahead and made myself an Ascendant Pump Shotgun from the blueprint that I had earlier. Not realizing that I could have used the Crafting Skill Potion to increase its damage. I placed down an alchemy bench and got to work making a bunch of gunpowder and headed out to some dwarven fortresses to kill some dwarfs in order to get some of the mithril or some diamonds and the energy crystals from them. Because like I said, I was going to need this for the boss fights. And these dwarves put up a hell of a fight. I went back to base, made some shotgun shells and then went to another fortress where I claimed some more loot. And then made my way out into the swamp. This is pretty much what I spent the next few days doing, killing dwarfs, grinding them down, because I was going to need all their resources that they give. Thankfully nothing bad happened and I was dealing a crap ton of damage. I went ahead and made up a bunch of mithril ingots, as many as I could make, and we also needed to use the obsidian flux to actually craft those into the other bars that we needed for the boss fights, as you needed to create the gem items. I also tamed up a Smilodon as I was going to need it to go into the caves located around Svartalheim and I figured this guy was going to be the best thing. Well, I think it's safe to say that we have enough Shadow Manes now. Yo, uh, we got a bright green Shadow Mane as well from one of the mutations. So I'd successfully bred up plenty of Shadow Manes, I just needed to raise them and ensure they were imprinted. So I headed back out once again to the Dwarven Fortresses. Thankfully, these dwarves spawn in pretty quickly, like we would kill them and then the next day or two days it would take for them to respawn and then we could get in. I also went ahead and fought any berserk creatures that I could find as these guys also dropped the items that I was going to need to fight the bosses once again. I then made my way into my first cave where we found level 800, level 900, level 700 cave denizens. Even this scorpion at 1248, an absolutely insane level. Crazy. But I was able to get the artifact of the strong and I did get copies of these artifacts as I did have neck cushion 3.0 on my shoulders so that we could get those artifacts and get doubles of them for each of the bosses. Each of these artifact caves though were very challenging. Like in terms of tames and difficulty and, and things you had to do to actually get to them, they were quite difficult. But we did manage to get artifact of the brute from this swamp cave. Thankfully, I did have a gas mask, so I was able to prevent myself from taking damage. And then I made my way down into these mines, which... There was a lot of dudes down here. And I spotted another entrance down here that we could go through to actually continue through the cave, which I hadn't spotted before. So I made my way up, following the arrows as I did, breaking through any rocks that needed breaking, and eventually found myself into another artifact room filled with Megalosauruses. Thankfully, I was high up, so I could kill them from a distance, and I managed to claim the artifact of the Clever. However, there was more to this mine. As you can see from this Onik, my luck is still intact, considering the first bite that I got gave me Mega Rabies. Thankfully, I was able to survive coming out of it at half health, but the Rubble Golem had something to say about that. Thankfully, I invaded it and got the artifact of the Hunter as well in the process. No, oh, don't make me kill the Otters. I'm a monster! All hail the sacred otter. No, don't eat your brethren! You said sacrilege! Don't do it, neck cushion! He's going for both of them! Absolute monster. I then returned back to the swamp cave and claimed the artifact of the pack as well as I had forgotten that one on the other side. I also got the artifact of the immune from a cave filled with wyverns and bugs. And my bug repellent wore off, so I had to leg it out of that cave so quickly before things started trying to kill me. Saw my life flash before my eyes. Let's go, Artifact of the Devourer, we take those. And I went ahead and killed a bunch of other Berserk Dinos so that I could get the resources that I needed to create the gem... To create the gem bosses. I then headed into the snow cave. Thankfully, I was able to bring my shadow mains as there were Perlovias and Rexes and claimed the artifact of the Sky Lord as well from this cave. Thankfully, nothing too bad happened in these caves, but it was finally time to face the bosses. So I started with the gorilla, crafting myself the gem of the gorilla as that was the only thing I needed now that I had all the artifacts. 
and I went ahead and fought the Gamma version of the Gorilla. The plan here was to do the Alphas, however I needed to make sure that I was up to the task of defeating the Gammas, and it was already very close to the 100 days milestone. So I had to make sure that I was up to the task of it, and I didn't actually even have enough Mithril Ore to be able to kill all the Alpha bosses. So I settled on Gamma as I figured I would, that would be attainable, and we successfully killed the Gamma Megapithecus. Next up was the Broodmother. So I crafted her gem and we got to work on fighting her. With a UD in tow and a Serratosaurus in tow to get some healing off and some buffs, I was hoping that we would be able to deal with her. And thankfully we were. The Broodmother falling to our Shadow Mains as well. Two bosses down, two to go. However, I needed to farm up some more Mithril Ore first, so I headed out to the various Dwarven Fortresses where I found this Dwarven soldier riding a berserk Thylacolio. This thing was terrifying. Thankfully with my two Shadow Mains they felt like they were up to the task. You can see there, Berserk Dwarven Rider with 25,000 HP. Successfully killed that and killed this Berserk Therizinosaurus and I actually had the resources that I needed in order to continue the boss fights thankfully. Once again, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video, which you can download right now using my link in the comments and claim the large bonus pack for free. So next up was the dragon. Now this guy, obviously the dragon's always really tough to fight. I did decide to try and ride on the UD as the auto courage rule wasn't actually working. It just wouldn't do it by itself. So it did take a lot of work and the dragon did slay quite a few of my canes, including the UD and a bunch of my shadow names as well. We lost quite a lot of them. You can see there, five just dropped just like that. Another two there. However, thankfully, I was able to finally defeat the Gamma Dragon. I did need to, however, replenish my Shadow Mains, so I raised some more, and then it was time to fight the Dinopithecus King. And all of it was going so well until it wasn't. I got knocked off the back of my Shadow Mane. Thankfully, I was able to recover and remount it. However, disaster struck as I was stuck and got knocked off once again off my Shadow Mains and I was killed alongside all my other Shadow Mains. And just like that, the end of the series was here. The 100 days on Ark Vitalheim was over and I had failed my mission to complete this map in 100 days. Which just means I'm going to need to revisit it with Ark Survival Ascended. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe down below for more, and I will catch you in the next one.